Hi everyone. Uh, in the previous lecture, we discussed about how to draw differential and common mode half circuits, and from that, how to estimate the differential mode and common mode gains. And we also saw the significance of both ACM, ADM, and ACMDM, all the three different gains, and what role they play in understanding differential amplifiers. Ideally, we said that for a very good differential amplifier. ACM and ACM DM should be as low as possible. Now, in the previous example, I considered a circuit which looked exactly similar to this, but these two nodes were short circuited. In that case, just to quickly refresh your memory, so we just drew an axis of symmetry and we said this node comes to AC ground, and this node also comes to differential ground. I mean, they are calling it AC ground, but it's understood there is ground only in a differential sense. For a differential circuit, that node, both these nodes came to AC ground, so the circuit reduced to something like this. So we had uh, what I've shown here. It this node came to AC ground, and so when you look into this resistance, the resistance looking up for this PMOS transistor was actually R O two in parallel with R, because gate is at ground. So the small signal VGS for this PMOS is zero, so there will be no GM component. And looking down, the resistance was R O one. So the total trans the the total gain for the circuit happened to be G M one times with the G M one times R O one parallel R O two parallel R. And I said, don't worry about the sign because the sign is usually determined by the circuit. So for example, if this is V I plus, this is V I minus, then this is a common source configuration. So you're applying a negative input here. So drain. If I call this as V O plus. Then it means the gain will be positive, because if uh, since I'm applying a negative input at the gate, the drain will be in phase or positive, as far as V I is concerned. So, V O plus, if I take my output V positive output as this and negative output as this terminal, then the gain will be positive. Now the important thing here is that now I've separated out these two nodes. I've open circuited these two nodes here. The moment you open circuit it, what happens to the circuit? What happens to the gain now? So we'll just analyze that problem. Now, if you see along the axis of symmetry, there is no line where the axis of symmetry intersects now in the upper half of the circuit, other than of course the supply voltage. So when you draw the small signal model, uh, the small signal AC model for the differential half or the differential half circuit, this node anyways comes to AC ground, so the circuit reduces to something like this. So where this AC supply is at ground, and the drain terminal, drain terminal, uh, sorry, the gate terminal is not at AC ground anymore because it's two different uh, arms. So there is no point where there will be a differential AC ground between the two transistors. So therefore, now for this circuit, if I want to find what is the input impedance looking up uh, or the impedance looking up into the PMOS, now to do that, I've shown here. So first. Uh, I we can analyze R not is absent in the circuit. We are looking at this terminal here. So if I'm applying a voltage delta V, since we know that the gate current is zero and that that's the only current flowing in the resistor R, the voltage drop across the resistor will be zero. So then I can simply replace the resistor by a short circuit. And if I do that, then the gate voltage here will also be at delta V. So the gate to source voltage of the PMOS device is delta V. So therefore, you will have a drain current flowing from drain to source of value G M two times delta V. So this PMOS is divided two times delta V. Then, if you add a resistor R not two in parallel, you will have two currents. So this this arm is going to carry a current of delta V by R O two. So then I can say that if R O two was absent, if R O two was absent, the current drawn, if R O two was absent. The current drawn from the input delta V, the voltage delta V, is G M two times delta V. So the resistance seen will simply be one by G M two. But now, if you have a resistance R O two in parallel, that's going to come in parallel with one by G M two. So the resistance looking up here in the circuit is going to be one by G M two parallel R O two. This resistance R will not figure in, and the resistance looking down is going to be R O one. So the overall gain is going to be G M one. R O one parallel R O two parallel one by G M two, so that's the gain for this circuit 
if I separate the nodes out. I'm not finding the common mode gain for the circuit because I've said if you bias if you bias the two transistors using current biasing and when we try to separate out or split the circuit into a perfect half circuit and try to draw the small signal AC model for this what will happen is that the drain voltage uh, the source voltage is open circuited so therefore there is no drain current flowing here if there is no drain current flowing here even though there is some uh, resistance at the drain terminal since there is no drain current flowing here the voltage drop across this R will be zero so therefore ACM will be zero so this circuit by using current biasing we said it really doesn't respond to common mode inputs and ACM DM is also zero The other circuit of interest is something like this. So in this circuit, we are supposed to find what is the differential and common mode gains. So if you see here, I've added one resistance RCM to ground. So right now, let's not worry about the DC biasing conditions. I'm asking you to assume that the DC current flowing through the resistors is zero. Okay, so we'll assume that the DC current flowing through the resistors is zero. Somehow I'm able to, I've managed to do that. So let's not worry about how did we do that. Now let's, after assuming that, after assuming that, and you're asked to analyze me, I can do that, for example, I can do that by adding a capacitor to this resistance here. And I can assume this capacitance to be really large, but that it's going to look like short circuit for any frequency other than DC, okay? So meaning the impedance of this capacitance is, capacitance is so, so large that only at DC it will look like an open circuit so which means no current is flowing through this path, DC current is not flowing. Okay, so but for all practical small signal purposes you can assume that C is a short. Now from this circuit you are supposed to find the differential half circuit, differential and common mode half circuit. As far as differential half circuit is concerned if I draw the axis of symmetry this RCM and capacitance just happen to be on axis of symmetry. So therefore, if this node comes to a small signal ground, AC ground, there will be no current flowing through these two elements. So the circuit will simply reduce, if I draw the small differential half circuit, it will reduce to something like this. So this node will come to AC ground, so it will reduce to something like this. So you have a resistance R here and R here. So when you are given a source degenerated MOS amplifier with source at uh, res I mean source resistance given known to us then we can write the gain as gm times the drain resistance divided by 1 plus gm rs rs being the source resistance and rd being the drain resistance uh, we saw there are different ways of looking at it we said that the moment we add a source resistance rs here that's going to reduce your transconductance so, and i call this as the effective transconductance times the drain resistance so that's the gain for the circuit the differential gain now when we are trying to find out common mode half circuit and common mode gain so then we will have to first draw the common mode half circuit. To draw the common mode half circuit what I am going to do is that I am going to split uh, I am going to split the lower half into two parts so this, this is going to be 2 RCM and this capacitance here is going to be C by 2 and uh, so what I am doing here is, is essentially if I have two impedances, Z, I want to split it into two equal halves. I, I have to split it as 2Z and 2Z when drawing common mode half circuits. Now, when I say 2Z, the impedance is getting multiplied twice. So, resistance will get multiplied by a factor of 2. The impedance of a capacitance is 1 by SC. So, if I want to multiply the impedance by a factor of 2, then I can say the capacitance is reduced by a factor of half, a reduced factor of 2. The capacitor is halved. So then the resistor here will be 2 RCM and the capacitance here is C by 2. And uh, this becomes your common mode half circuit. So I said along the axis of symmetry you will have to open circuit these nodes. So this node will be an open circuit and this will also be an open circuit. The moment you open circuit this, uh, since no current is flowing through this guy, I can assume this resistor as a short the circuit reduces to something like this. Now if you see, again you can assume capacitance is a short circuit. So you have 2 RCM and R. 
Now, if I assume that there was some load resistance here, if there was some load resistance connected to AC ground, then the gain for this circuit would have been Gm times Rl upon 1 plus Gm into R plus 2 RCM. That would have been the gain for the circuit, the minus sign. But now RL is infinity. This node, output node is open circuited, so RL is infinity. If RL is infinity, then the gain will tend to infinity. So this is the gain if R0 is infinity. If R0 is infinity, the gain for this circuit, common mode gain will be infinity. But if I assume the circuit has a finite R0, if the circuit has a finite R0, then um, there is a very simple way of calculating the gain. And if you are asked to find the gain for the circuit, you can look at the circuit and say that since the drain current is open circuit, meaning initially there was a constant current flowing through that, so which means the current cannot change. So if I assume it's open circuit, the drain current, small signal drain current here is zero. The small signal drain current is zero, the same drain current has to flow through these two resistors, R and 2 RCM. Since that is zero as well, the voltage drop across R and 2 RCM will be zero. So therefore, I can ignore that and ground this node. Now this reduces to a simple common source amplifier with a voltage gain given by minus of Gm R0. So if I assume finite R0, uh, in this case, the common mode gain reduces to minus of Gm R0. Now we will slightly complicate the same circuit. Uh, I have made this resistance as R now instead of RCM. So again, I am going to assume some capacitance here as well. And here also well, there is a capacitance. See, just to tell you that there is no DC current flowing through the resistor. That's it. Now you can assume this capacitance is a short circuit for all analysis, small signal analysis. It only the capacitance purpose is there only to block DC currents. That's it. Now you are supposed to find the differential and common mode gain in the circuit, assuming R naught as infinity. Again, you can directly draw the common mode half circuit. So I will call this as R and R. So, so this becomes, if I write the common mode half circuit around, this is the axis of symmetry. Differential, sorry, first we will find the differential half circuit is, is, is the same as the previous one because any element which is along the axis of symmetry will really not appear in the differential gain. Because this point is going to come to AC ground, this point is going to come to AC ground. Therefore, there will be no current flowing through these two elements. When that happens, the, the differential half circuit will simply reduce to a transistor, uh, the, the, the MOS transistor and two resistors. So you will have R here and R at the drain terminal. So for this circuit, the gain is GMR upon 1 plus GMR. In the second case, however, when we are drawing the common mode half circuit, you have to be a little bit careful. So you have to split this impedance into two halves. So we have to split this impedance into two halves. So you will have, this is the circuit. So this will be 2R and 2R. I have ignored the capacitor because the capacitor is short circuit in the small signal model. I am assuming that it is such a large cap that it will look like a short circuit in the small signal model. The moment we draw this model, then we will have to open circuit these two nodes. Once we open circuit them, the voltage gain from the gate to this node. So this is the node we are calculating. So this simply reduces to a common source amplifier with source degeneration with a drain and source resistance of value 3R. So the gain simply becomes Gm times 3R, so 3 GMR upon 1 plus 3 GMR. So this is the common mode gain for the circuit. So that's it. We have discussed uh, all the interesting problems on how to draw differential and common mode half circuits and estimate gain from that quite intuitively. Of course, in all these examples, because the circuit is purely differential, which means they are perfectly symmetric around a line of line of symmetry, axis of symmetry, I can say ACM DM will be zero for all the circuits. But now we are going to consider circuits which are now where there is no perfect axis of symmetry or there rather there is no symmetry around the axis, axis of symmetry which we have considered for the previous examples in a differential amplifier. Now in that case, what will happen to these gains? 
the three gains ADM, ACM and ACM DM. In fact, the moment we break the symmetry, if there is some mismatch between the two halves of a differential circuit, then ACM DM will no longer be zero. So we'll take some examples and see how to how to find ACM DM and what is the effect of those asymmetries on all the three parameters, the, the three gain parameters. So shown here is a circuit where I've assumed for the time being R1 and R2 are same and the transconductor, the input pairs are slightly of different length, different widths. Now this is expected in a practical integrated circuit when you fabricate this transistors and resistors, no two resistors will be exactly identical. So they both will have some small uh, mismatches. So that mismatch in the presence of those mismatches between the transistor W by L's and the resistor values, we are going to analyze assume, assuming they both have some error. So which means in this example, I've assumed both the transistors dimensions are not same. So which means the currents will also be slightly off because it's a constant voltage biasing. Gate is at DC voltage of VCM. Source voltage is at some fixed voltage VS, capital VS. So VGS is fixed. So then there will be some small mismatch in the currents as well. So that will lead to a mismatch in the transconductances. So when we have a mismatches in the transconductance, what will happen to all the three parameters, ACM, ADM and ACM, DM. So first I'm going to, so now that when there is a mismatch between the two halves, we can no longer draw the differential half circuit. Because differential half circuit assumes that the two halves is perfectly identical. And because they are perfectly identical, we have to just analyze one half and get all the expressions for the gains. But now, because it's not identical, when there is mismatch, it's no longer identical. So then we have to draw the both halves and estimate the gains. So first for the differential half circuit, I'm drawing it here. So this node, this node voltage is anyways at AC ground because it's a voltage, ideal voltage source and the differential half circuit reduces to something like this. So we'll apply VI by 2 and minus VI by 2 and try to calculate the gain. So this half is a common source amplifier. So this will be plus GM2 VI by 2 into R. I applied a negative input. So you get a positive output. And for this side, it's going to be minus GM1 VI by 2 into R. So that's the drain voltage VO minus. So when you subtract the two, I'm going to get GM1 plus GM2 by 2 into R. So you get the average of the two GMs. The differential gain will be, I can write it as GM av times R. That's the differential gain for the circuit. Where GM av is the average of the two input transconductances. The next case, I'm going to compute the common mode gain. To find the common mode gain, so again we'll have to apply the same inputs VCM and VCM to the two sides of the amplifier and the output voltage we calculate VO plus VO minus then take the average of the two voltages. That's your ACM. So to measure that I'm applying same inputs here VCM and VCM to both the inputs and then calculate the gains. So the, for both the stages it's going to be minus of GM1R. The second stage is going to be minus of GM2 R VCM, GM1 R VCM. So take the average of both the voltages. Again, you will get minus of GM1 plus GM2 by 2 into R. That's same as what we derived for differential gain except for the sign. So the magnitude of ACM is exactly equal to ADM even when there is a mismatch for a voltage source biasing. Now the next thing, the more important thing here is the whole idea of carrying out this analysis was to find out ACM DM because that's what is a measure of asymmetry. I've already said that ACM DM gives you an idea of asymmetry present in the circuit. So if ACM DM should be estimated from a common mode analysis, circuit analysis. So from, I'm going to apply common mode inputs at both the inputs and I'm going to take the output differentially. So it's going to be GM1 times R VCM uh, is, is the negative output so this is VO minus and VO plus is also is going to be the same which is minus of GM2 R VCM so subtract the two you will get GM1 minus GM2 into R as the ACM DM 
Now I'm going to call GM1 minus GM2 as delta GM. Delta GM is the mismatch between the two transconductances. Let GM1 be small gm and gm2 be equal to gm plus delta gm okay so or we can assume the other way gm plus delta gm and gm2 as gm itself then delta gm i can write i, I can write this expression delta gm times r as i'm going to assume delta gm is so small that uh, when I take the ratio, I'm, I'm ideally taking, I'm taking, dividing it by GM and multiplying it by GM. Okay. If I'm dividing and multiplying it by GM, so this term GMR happens to be the common mode of differential gain. So what I get here is an interesting result. It tells me ACM DM, which is what I've written here, ACM DM here is nothing but the fractional mismatch times the common mode gain. So if there is no mismatch, this result, this result tells us the common mode ACM DM will be exactly equal to zero. Now I can carry out an exactly similar analysis by assuming R1, there is a mismatch in the resistors. Resistors are not the same. And we can very easily show that ADM, ACM, in fact, I'll, I'll probably show one step. So we this is the differential half circuit. We can very easily show that the differential gain will be GM into the average of the two resistances, R1 plus R2 by 2. And similarly, ACM can also be very easily shown to be GM times R1 plus R2 by 2. And ACM DM, ACM DM is again, you'll have to subtract these two terms. So the gain of this half will be minus of GM times R1. The gain of the second half will be GM times R2 subtract the two, we will get gm times r1 minus r2. So that again can be written as gm times delta r. So I'll multiply and divide it by r. So gm r plus delta r. So now if you see this term gm r, I can approximately call it as acm. So if you see what is the exact expression for acm here, the exact exp expression for acm here is minus of gm into R1 plus R2, so I can I can call it as I'm, I'm assuming R1 as R plus delta R, R2 as R. So R1 plus R2 by 2 becomes R plus delta R by 2. This is the expression I get for ACM. I'm going to assume this is approximately equal to GM times R. I'm going to neglect this variation here. I'm calling it approximately equal to this. So this term gm times r i can write it as mod of acm times delta r by r this will be acm dm so again acm dm depends upon the fractional error in the resistance so what happens when you have mismatch in both the resistor and the mosfet what happens when you have mismatch in both the resistor and the mosfet so we'll do a quick common mode analysis I'm applying same input on both the sides the gain from <coughs> one side it's going to be gm1 r1 into vcm so this is vo minus vo plus is going to be minus of gm2 r2 vcm so vo plus minus vo minus is going to be <coughs> gm1 r1 minus gm2 r2 i mean i'm subtracting dividing it by vcm so you get this again i'm going to use this approximation gm2 as gm1 plus delta gm r2 as r1 plus delta r and i'm going to approximate acm see what will happen to acm now in the presence of both uh, mismatches in resistor and the uh, i mean resistor uh, and the transconductor is that we are going to get expressions very similar to what we got before okay so we are going to get expressions which are very close to, very similar to what we had gotten before. So I am going to approximate, because I am going to assume the errors in transconductance, GM1 and R1 are so small that I can approximate ACM GM2 mod of GMR. The approximate the differential mode or the common mode gain to GMR itself. Okay, or GM1 times R1. So using that, all I can say is that, so um, I can call it as, so this is R2 
I am calling it as GM1 and GM1R so GM1 is small GM and R1 is R so here I am assuming there is some small errors from that deviations from those values I am saying that the common mode gain I am assuming it to be very close to GM times R so then all you need to do is uh, substitute this in this expression and expand it you will get a term gm delta r plus delta gm r plus delta gm delta r I mean if you expand it you can very clearly see that the first term cancels out gm1 r1 will cancel out here in the expression that I have shown here it will cancel out you will finally be left with just the error terms now this again I will ignore this third term because that again will be much smaller than the first two terms by simply assuming that gm will be much greater than delta gm and r will also be much greater than delta r this type by this i can ignore this term you'll be left with gm into delta r so i can multiply and divide by r and multiply and divide by gm so i what i'll get here is acm mod of acm i can write it as uh, acm dm as mod of acm times the fractional change in the resistor and fractional change in the transconductance so both of them if you have mismatches in both of them in gm and r then acm dm will get progressively worse and worse see when i say worse it should be the the if acm dm is high then it's a bad circuit so it's going to get higher and higher i'll stop at this point in the next lecture we'll start discussing acm dm for current bias differential amplifiers